Hey all this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we are going to be doing some more AP Physics 1 free response questions and again we're focusing on uh, torque, rotational motion, uh, rolling, that sort of thing. As usual I suggest you um, pause the video and attempt the problem before continuing. So a large sphere rolls without slipping across a horizontal surface. The sphere has a constant translational speed of 10 meters per second, a mass m of 25 kilograms and a radius r of 0.2 meters. The moment of inertia of the sphere about its center of mass is 2 fifths mr squared. The sphere approaches a 25 degree incline at a height 3 meters as shown above and rolls up the incline without slipping. Calculate the total kinetic energy of the sphere as it rolls along the horizontal surface. Okay, so the, 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 um, the total kinetic energy it has rolling energy and it has just translational energy. So I say the total kinetic energy is um, 1 half mv squared plus this is tr this is linear kinetic energy and then I have rotational kinetic energy one half i omega squared okay so the mass is 25 kilograms it's moving at 10 meters per second plus one half times its rotational inertia is two fifths mr squared m is 25 kilograms R is, um, what is the radius of the sphere? 0.2 meters squared. So that's I. And then omega is uh, V over R. So I do 10 meters per second divided by, uh, because remember the um, V is equal to R omega. So omega is V, v over R. Okay. Um, just making sure. Yeah, yeah, I think I got that right. So when I plug into the calculator, hopefully I did this right, 1750 joules is what I got. Okay, so that's the total kinetic energy it initially has. Calculate the magnitude of the sphere's velocity just as it leaves the top of the incline. Okay, so at the top here, some of its energy has been converted into um, uh, potential energy, right? So I got to subtract the potential energy. I kind of want to simplify this equation. So the total energy that I have at the top is one half mv squared plus one half i, which is two fifths m r squared times v over r squared plus uh, mgh, which is uh, which is mgh, and that equals that needs to equal 1750 joules. Okay, and my goal then is to solve for v. Now these, this r squared is going to cancel with this r squared. So this is 1 half mv squared plus 1 fifth mv squared. Uh, what's 1 half plus 1 fifth? That's 7 tenths. So if I combine these two, I get 7 tenths mv squared plus mgh is equal to 1750. And so I can solve uh, for... Um, V squared. I can subtract MGH. So V squared would equal 1750 minus MGH. And then I'm going to divide by 7 tenths M. Right? And I take the square root of this. Uh, 3 meters is what I use for H. So 25 times 9.8 times 3. And then divided by 0 0.7, which is 7 tenths times 25. And then take the square root of that. So its velocity at the top would be 7.62 meters per second. So that's part one. Um, part two is uh, specify the direction of the sphere's velocity just as it leaves the top of the incline. Um, just as it leaves, is it's like this right this is its velocity so it's um, 
it's the same angle as the ramp, which is 25 degrees above horizontal. C. Neglecting air resistance, calculate the horizontal distance from the point where the sphere leaves the incline to the point where the sphere strikes the level surface. Okay, I want the horizontal distance. So this is gonna, this is a kinematic at this point. It's gonna do a tra an arc trajectory like this. Okay, and yeah, the simplest way is to do um, kinematics on this. Now, um, I want to break this velocity into its horizontal and vertical compo components, right? Because I, I want to do, so Vx is equal to V cosine of the th angle, and Vy is equal to V sine of the th theta, or this is theta, which is 25 degrees in this case. Okay, so um, the horizontal distance it travels, d, is just simply its horizontal velocity times the time it's in the air. That's equal to V cosine theta times T, time in the air. Because there's no acceleration in the X direction, right? There's no, there's no drag, no wind resistance, nothing pushing on the ball. So it's gonna have a constant velocity in the X direction the whole way. To, to determine the time in the air though, I always have to look at the vertical one because that, that's, that's what's gonna determine how long it takes for it to hit the ground. So uh, I want to use this kinematic equation. Delta x is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. Now in this case, you have to be careful. Like a lot of these times you're launching and landing at the same point. But now I want to be a little bit careful on direction because I'm not, I'm launching three meters above the ground and I'm landing here. So um, let's be clear. I'm going to establish uh, down as the positive direction and up as negative. So in, in terms of um, the y direction, so this is the x direction, this is the y direction. The tra the, the move, I wanna move three meters, right? Delta x is three meters, because I wanna fall three meters. So that's three. Its initial velocity in the y direction uh, is vy, but it's negative vy, because vy is pointing up. So this would be negative v sine theta times t plus one half, acceleration is down, which is positive, so that's just g t squared, okay? Um, so how do you solve something like this? You gotta use a quadratic formula. So um, let's, let's plug in some numbers here. Uh, I'm gonna bring the three to this side, so I'm gonna say zero. One half g is a 4.9 t squared minus V sine theta, well this is V 7.62. Uh, it's interesting that they gave you these numbers because it tells me that this one should have been not as tricky to calculate, like a non-calculator of course, but that's okay. Maybe maybe back then they just had a, uh, a simple scientific cal calculator but didn't do trig functions. So I'm gonna just go ahead. It's 7.62 times sine of 25 degrees. Um, so I get 3.22t minus three equals zero. And so now t is equal to three point using quadratic formula, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 3.22 squared minus four times 4.9 times negative three for AC divided by two times 4.9. That's equal to 3.22 plus or minus, uh, let's just do this this whole square root, square root of 3.22 squared, 4.9 times three, 8.317 divided by 9.8. Note that, uh, do I do plus or minus? I'm gonna have two solutions here. Um, if I do minus, this will be negative. So I, I don't care about negative time. Uh, I only care about positive time from this point on. So um, I'm gonna do plus. So I end up with uh, 1.177 seconds. And so that goes into here. V cosine theta times T 
that's times 7.2 times cosine 25 degrees and I get uh, 8.13 uh, meters okay so that's that D suppose instead that the sphere were to roll toward the inclined state above but the incline were frictionless state whether the speed of the sphere just as it leaves the top of the incline would be less than equal to or greater than the speed calculated and be briefly explain briefly um, if it were frictionless um, what would happen is it would keep rotating at the same speed because um, there would be no friction to slow it down it would just slide along like slipping so what that would mean is um, um, what would that mean if I look at it from an energy point of view, I still have to gain this energy. I still have this energy, but this energy wouldn't change. This would stay the same. And so my instead of this going, see, normally at the top, some of the potential energy went came from the rotational energy conversion. So if all of it has to come from kinetic energy, and because the rotational energy stays the same, what that means is the kinetic energy drops a lot more. So I'm going to say um, it'd be less because uh, it would lose more uh, linear kinetic energy if there's no if no loss in rotational energy. Okay, is so that kind of this is from an energy point of view? I know it seems kind of in, unintuitive that you know it's still spinning fast, but that basically means none of the rotational energy was lost, um, which means all of the energy conversion from here to gain all this potential energy must have come from the linear kinetic, and so V would be less. Okay, um, hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.